The experiment I presented today was how does pitch affect loudness? Uh, I was studying how different subjects perceive the different levels of pitch. I got this idea from my sound physics class and we were kind of going around um, talking about instruments and the physics of the sound from the instruments and I was messing with the guitar and I remember that started to make me think of pitch. And so I think he, he came in with interesting questions and in the sound physics class where he started developing the project, he you know, he picked out a good question fairly early on and then uh, could work on devising the experiment to carry that out. So my experiment is that I am testing out sound, okay? And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to play two notes for you, all right? And okay. I'm going to ask you which <laughs> note you think is louder. Okay. And your only options are the first note was louder or the second note was louder. He read in a book that we looked at in the class mm -hmm. that higher pitched sounds tend to be perceived as louder by people and he wanted to, to test whether that was actually the case. So he recorded several sounds from an electronic keyboard at different pitches. I would play a higher note for them and then a lower note and see which one they thought was louder purely based on the pitch of the note. Which one? Second one? Second one? Yeah. The courage that I got in previous classes, I always felt like I was more welcome to kind of come up with whatever idea I wanted and to take that seriously and to turn that into a scientific question. And I mean, that's really where my idea came from. You know, I didn't, it was a, there was no question that couldn't be tested almost. And I knew that from the previous classes that I have done. And like with like hip hop, I guess specifically I hear it in like the, the, constant the teachers always allowed us to, you know, no matter what's answer whatever question we wanted, answer it in our own way, um, try to answer it in whatever way we wanted. So that kind of made me way more confident going into this experiment. It is their experiment. It's their work. It's their question. And it's not ours. And um, you don't get that same sense of being part of a community, that sense of being a scientist if you're doing somebody else's question. It's for a, a survival instinct. And so that made me think of all the times that I feel like, I just felt like people are more attracted to high pitch sounds than low pitch sounds. Um, particularly, you know, when I think of like the sirens, sirens are very high pitch as opposed to low pitch. Car screeches are high pitch and people turn when they hear them. And so I just, combined with, you know, his, what he said, and my real life knowledge, that kind of made my kind of process. So I think some of the things he learned along the way were the importance of doing um, preliminary work can really help you learn things you can't anticipate. I've probably been working on this whole um, project for maybe a year never thought I'd be able to type something that long, but as I worked on it and had more ideas to put in it, it just kind of kept on getting a lot longer and longer. And a lot of that did have to do with the fact that I was just gaining more knowledge over the past year. And kind of, I feel like I'm really able to talk about what I've learned. We finished collecting the data and finished writing the paper and prepared for his defense. You're saying you're measuring loudness, but the decibel scale mm -hmm. is based on powers of 10. Mm -hmm. Could you just explain that to me a little bit? The way that um, the decibel scale works is that it kind of, it goes in powers of 10 above the threshold of hearing. So, um, so 10 to the first power so from what I understood, 10 to the first power would be equivalent to 10 decibels, kind of. So the powers, like I said, are above the threshold of hearing. And because the human ear can hear such a large range, they kind of have to simplify it into decibels. Hmm. Huh. Didn't get that. 
I'd say the most challenging thing about the presentation was the questions that I got. Could you do something that's even closer to, to what you were doing in your paper? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Using sort of the same, I mean, a similar system like you had in your, in your research. Is there any way that you could... could yeah, I'm wondering without, if... Like, I mean, yes, we would give you all the fancy equipment, uh -huh. but is there a way to do it even without that? Um, I'm wondering if playing two sounds that were more obviously like one was maybe 80 decibels and one was like 30 decibels and seeing if they could determine the difference between a louder sound and a softer sound and then only using people who could actually tell which sound was louder. So these are kind of questions from adults, from professionals in their fields, you know, they've went to school for science or math or whatever and they're kind of asking their questions, they're not holding it back from you. What type of, did, would they say like first note, or it's the second note, or yeah. how, how, like how, did, or did, how did they respond? Um, I told them that they could choose the first note, their two options were the first note was louder or the second note was louder. And so I'd play the two notes uh -huh. for them, and they could either say the first note okay. was louder or the second note. It wasn't the higher note or the lower note. No, that's what I was which, really which curious. Note? Were they saying the no, higher no, 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 one, no. lower it was one, or first or second? First or second. Okay. Yeah. Did I misread? I thought later on you mentioned something about a data collection sheet. Mm -hmm. Oh did yeah. They, did they mark down? No, the, the data collection sheet was for me. For you. And okay. so I just would when I would ask them first or second note, and I would circle because I would know which notes were being played. So I would circle the actual notes. Mm -hmm. It might seem kind of small, but maybe you can just add that in your procedure mm -hmm. that you collected the data instead. I've, I've been to many defenses, and Jamil's was one of them, where the external person had ideas of ways that the student could approach the data or could approach follow-up projects that myself and the other science teachers might just not have. I think even I personally like, um, sometimes you can put a little symbol or something if you're trying to indicate that you the idea that an outside person has read the paper, liked it, and has specific questions about the way he conducted the research and the way that he's written the research up. It's, it's in a sense of accomplishment. It's a sense of being part of a scientific community. So after he presents, we send him out of the room so that we can discuss it. Uh, there's a rubric that we have to fill out, and we always fill the rubric out first because we want to get people's reactions to the paper and to his presentation. Oh, okay. Then we, we talk about if we think they've passed. We ask each other, um, do we think he understood what he was talking about? Uh, we ask questions about how he came to that experiment, which teacher he worked with. In Jamil's case, he had a really nice defense. So you passed? Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well done. At the end of the process, the kids really feel like they've done something important. And they really feel like they've investigated something they were interested in. I think they feel empowered by being able to do that. And I think that they feel proud of having put together a really good piece of work. I think coming from a school that's focused on testing and exams and coming to a school that's more focused on performance-based assessment, I can enjoy more of what I'm doing. Um, so before with the exams, I felt like there was a lot of just pressure to memorize these facts and kind of, I didn't really care about my education, I didn't care about what I was learning, I cared about getting a high score on a test. And kind of coming here and doing PBATs, I was able to actually take an interest in what I was doing and kind of really learn more about myself. I mean, I would have never learned that I could put so much of myself into a scientific lab report if I never got the chance to do this type of, you know, performance-based assessment. Um, as opposed to just, like I said, memorizing things and memorizing what other people are telling you to memorize. You're not really learning or discovering your own voice. So I feel like with the performance-based assessments, I have more of my own voice. I can kind of put more of me into what I'm learning. Uh, so, yeah.
Thanks, Jamila. Good job. Thank you. Take any snacks on the way. Thank you very much.